Hi, my name is Joe Painter. This is What's the Story on the PeopleChronicles.com. And our guest this afternoon, Dr. Gregory Bach and his wife, Deborah Bach. Yes, ma'am. And Deborah has been diagnosed with Lyme disease. Dr. Gregory Bach is a Lyme disease expert. He has also been appointed, I believe, just this past August yes. to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Health's Tick and Lyme Disease Task Force, where you are the chair of the education department. We left off, Dr. Bach, with um, Act 83 recently passed in Pennsylvania which finally requires doctors to be educated about the symptoms of Lyme disease and required to treat it. Is correct. that correct? That is correct. Up until now, they weren't educated on the symptoms. Symptoms were dismissed, and they were um, sometimes punished mm -hmm. if they treated it. Correct. Is that a true statement? That is true. Physicians, go ahead. I'm sorry. So we've made a big leap here. Yes, we're very, uh, very uh, happy with our government. And there's hope out. for people who are suffering with it. Yes, that's correct. Um, you, where we left off, uh, you indicated that there are other diseases that are directly related to Lyme disease. Correct. And you started naming diseases with a fancy medical terms. I'll put it that okay. way. Um, I want to throw out fibromyalgia. I hear that a lot. Okay. And, and that seems to be a fairly recent uh, term that's thrown around. It's chronic pain. Correct. Is that... As a result of Lyme disease, is it indicative of Lyme disease or is it separate? Well, fibromyalgia is a, a catch-all term. It's usually about 13 to 16, what we call trigger areas of pain on the body, and that's how it's actually physically diagnosed. There is not a test that says you have fibromyalgia. And that we were talking about the controversy before about you have to have a positive test for Lyme, but not for fibromyalgia or for some other tests. But the spectrum of Lyme disease, it gets mixed up with other well-known diseases such as multiple sclerosis. ALS. ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. You did an interview in People back in 03. Yes, there was I, a gentleman with ALS. Tom Coffey. He was 30 years old. Tom was dying. He actually picked out his own uh, funeral date. And um, I saw him from a town called Fredericks, Maryland. I had about a half a dozen uh, individuals that I was treating already. Came to me, couldn't speak. He was drooling. Uh, I said, Tom, I don't know if I can help you, but I'll do the physical exam. I'll look at you. I'll test your blood. And when I was doing his physical exam, I found a giant EM or e migraines rash on the back of his head, the base of his head. And Nobody I said, Nobody saw that prior? Well, because you have to look. And it <laughs> takes time. <laughs> and you can't right. be in an HMO society where you're in and out in five minutes. I, I do traditional old fashioned uh, medicine where I treat you and help you each visit until you get better there. So he went on, and um, he did survive. We did follow him on film, which I have tapes of him. He did then have uh, a son. He named his son after me, and he's a physician today. ALS is a disease, but you looked at it as a symptom of Lyme yes. disease. Yes, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. Lou Gehrig was a famous ball player. Uh, Where doing, did he grow up? Lou Gehrig had an estate in Lyme, Connecticut. When I was doing a lot of my research in ALS and Lyme disease, I had a patient that was a 26-year-old white male that was an ar ar arboricultural expert, gardener, gardener and uh, working on a master's degree, and he came down with ALS, and his employment site was the Lou Gehrig's estate in Lyme, Connecticut. I, I picked him up. I properly diagnosed him with Lyme disease. Uh, his physicians back home helped work with me, and um, he's still... Are you implying oh, well. that ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, is a symptom of Lyme disease? Uh, what I'm saying is there are degrees or cases of um, ALS that um, may actually be Lyme disease. Okay, I want to go rewind a moment to you cured him. How, and, and you are healthy, you have your hearing, you have mm -hmm. your sight. What is the protocol? What is the treatment? Well, what we do is we look at four different categories of treatment, which we're in the process of writing this down for the state. Um, first of all, you want to attack the, the major organism if, for Lyme disease. And then there are these sub-co-infections like Rocky Mountain spotted fever, mycoplasma pneumonia, et cetera. You want to add a second antibiotic group to hit that. The third group of uh, organisms that travel with Lyme disease is one called babesiosis, which is the cousin or brother to malaria, like malaria mm -hmm. from Africa or, or the islands. Fly. Exactly. And we use a parasitic mepron called, a medicine called mepron, uh, which is easily taken and it helps to uh, keep, uh, help that disease under control. Is the protocol <laughs> always an antibiotic? Well, we use an antibiotic, a second antibiotic group, 
we use an antiparasitic, and then the last group we attack are viruses, parvovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, HSV-1 virus. These viruses also co, uh, or cohabitate along with the organism of Lyme. They all transport together, either through tick, blood, saliva, tears. I wrote a paper 20 years ago on the possibility of sexual transmission. Uh, it, it wasn't it was received with skepticism. In January of this year, an international group of physicians actually uh, redid my experiment, and guess what? It's sexually transmitted. And, Lyme uh, disease. Yes. You, you keep using the word virus. That's a communicable. Well, viruses are a different group. There's bacterias. Okay. Okay. There's uh, parasites. There's viruses. They're just like little um, phylums or kingdoms or titles of groups. So each one has to be treated in a different fashion. So you have to do all of the players at once. They don't once. all respond to the same antibiotic the same way. So it's like juggling. How many? How many have been um, treated with Lyme disease? It doesn't go away. The typical protocol is perhaps 21 days of an antibiotic, Correct. and then you're done. And in fact, a quick search on Wikipedia will tell you that most of the medical community um, frowns upon long-term use Correct. of antibiotics, yet right. I know people who suffer from, I don't know if you would right. call it chronic Lyme disease, who have been on antibiotics for three and four months, possibly uh, pick Lyme, and um, they have found positive results so why is the medical community so torn and are we closing that gap well it's economics and um and also you don't want to use look you have to be respectful with these drugs you don't just throw these things out of people if people are well documented for these diseases they need to be treated and treated properly uh the protocol now for q fever cox really bernetti which is a brother to rocky mad spotted fever okay. um is actually 18 months and that's cdc protocol so that's not two weeks and you're cured however that is one one of the co-infections that travels with Lyme disease. And I work with a lot of farmers, wonderful dairy farmers, uh, people that are exposed to animals, and a lot of them carry Q fever. Last year, I reported the most Q fever in the state of Pennsylvania. And, um, you know, the, the, the machine, so to speak, where the uh, people that we, um, the surveillance department, um, either they're overwhelmed or they're, they're watching it, but no one's responding they to it. They want to hear it. Things like um, arthritis, swollen knuckles, right. um, chronic pain, depression. Excellent. People talk right. about these things, and this is what I'm suffering from, and they're constantly told, you're crazy, there's nothing we can do, it's not Lyme disease. Is Act 83 and the research and the, the documents and the testing that you have done the beginning of the end of all of that? Well, in the state of, you, you don't have Lyme disease. If I may turn this sure, this way, because sure. I can. Right from your website. Right. Um, the the way it, it spells out is simply is this: that there are multiple things. People can have something as simple as headaches or uh, eye fatigue or pain or depression. Uh, Lyme has both a physical aspect and a psychological or or uh, emotional aspect to it. Um, and I, I have a list here that we, if I can run sure. quickly through it, uh, people get uh, sometimes. Fever, sweats, or chills, that, that is basically common for whenever there's an infection in the body. People will see weight changes with Lyme. 60% of the people gain weight, and then there, there's a group, about 10%, that actually cannot keep weight on, and then the rest are within normal weight. But Lyme tends to make obesity. We have an outbreak of obesity in the United States today. Children's obesity, it and it I believe that it is, it is tied in with these diseases that aren't being um, um, addressed. How can something so prevalent, something that so is missed. presenting itself in so many different forms, and you're just scratching the surface of this list that is on your website, um, be so misdiagnosed? Well, again, it goes back to politics and money. You always want to know anything in, in the business world is, is follow, follow the money, the money, money trail. trail. Yeah. And it's not meant like that. And I always say this when I talk to my lawmakers. If you have a healthy um, voter and someone that actually can work and pay taxes in your state, you want to keep them healthy. Then you get more tax. If people get sick and you don't address a problem that they're getting sick in your state, then your state's going to get sicker and you're going to have less money for your taxes. There's so no it's, grants it's for, like that. for research in Lyme disease. There's no money in it. We're talking about the state of Pennsylvania. Yes. You did mention there are some states that already have something like Act 83. Right. Where do we rank? I'm, I'm guessing the Northeast region is probably it's, rife right. with ticks. 
Correct. Um, the reason why the the eastern seaboard was uh, first picked up for this was because there was research in um, experimental islands like Block Island. There were, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and there's the zoonotic pathway where birds carry um, fleas and ticks, and it goes along the waterways and then down south through uh, Texas, et cetera. So that's kind of why the Northeast was hit. But it's actually a misnomer that Lyme is in every state and in every, every part of the world. How many states have been proactive and, and followed your lead or jumping on board with, uh, wait a minute, let's stop looking at symptoms and let's get to the root of Lyme disease? Um, I'd say at least there's a dozen that have laws in place right now, okay. and um, appropriately so. Uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York is fighting very desperately. Uh, New Jersey is not getting it through. Pennsylvania, thank goodness, after 19 years has gotten it through. Are doctors Virginia, in those states better Maryland. educated and better able to diagnose? Yes, and then they're also uh, the pressure of doing something wrong, according to the medical board, that would be outside their normal scope of uh, treatment um, is taken away. They don't have to be, they're still responsible for, for what they do as a doctor, but they don't have to be under the gun where they can be knocked on the door at night and then they come in and investigate you and, and you get uh, you get Lose your beat up. Let's make it like a jump here. Yeah. And and we're going to make it positive and say Pennsylvania. This with Act eighty three, there's going to be a huge change in the way that the, oh, our doctor absolutely. and medical community thinks, and so that now we're going to stop um, medicating a a symptom. Right. And we're going to find the root, and let's say it's Lyme disease. Is there a cure? Well, let's, let's look at let's take one disease that gets misdiagnosed. Okay. Let's call it multiple sclerosis, which it is. 1956, the year I was born, MS came out in the textbooks, and it was first mm -hmm. diagnosed at University of Pennsylvania as a conglomerate of symptoms. They didn't know what it is. MS and Lyme disease are very closely aligned, and a lot of MS can be Lyme disease. There's multiple sclerosis, but probably a majority or a good percentage of it has to do with infection Fact. as a base. Well, no, wait, so if you treat the Lyme disease, the MS gets better. The ALS gets gets better in the some deafness cases. Deafness and gets, so sight. these symptoms are right. being alleviated if right. you treat Lyme. Right. And again, the protocol is the antibiotic. In the antibiotic, the antiparasitic or or paras or um, antiviral agent. But it can never be cured. Well, it's like this: shingles is something that we acquire at chickenpox when we're little children. Mm -hmm. And then when we get older and our immune systems actually start to become compromised, and I'll explain about that in a second, uh, then you get shingles, which is secondary infection because it lives in the nerve root ganglia of the central nervous system. However, it, I feel that as you age and you pick up more diseases from your environment, that makes your immune system go down. And that's why these other, why people get a secondary uh, outbreak well, of uh, chickenpox. There's more than too. It, yes. Are ticks the only carriers? Uh, as we went back, we said tears. I mean, you said it could be sexually, sexually transmitted. Transmit. So has it's, it mutated in some no, no, way? No, that it's, it's, no, it's just that they didn't look. It, no. It's in mother's milk. It's in tears, bodily fluids, and um, it can and can be transmitted by any form of bodily fluid. When you say it is, is it a bacteria that Lyme is in disease, your body as a result of bacteria a and the other bacteria co-infections and and viruses and parasites that go with it? Somebody who's suffering from Lyme disease, perhaps you are right now, or some of these symptoms, and this is ringing true and resonating with you, what should that person do right now when Act 83 just started? How can I find relief right now? Where do I go? What do I do? Well, there's, um, there are websites out there for education for Lyme disease. The uh, ILADS, the um, International Lyme and Associate Disease Society, is a group that we had started a number of years ago. So that gives you some information online. You have to find physicians that are actually uh, interested in doing this type of medicine where these physicians usually come in is that someone in their family a loved one uh, gets sick and then they're forced to learn about it help us discern what to look for in that music in that physician well it's 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 there are some uh, lists of people that actually do the um, research in it that are up from some of these societies uh, and not too many ILADS. doctors i-l-a-d-s yes. yes okay and that's ilads dot uh, org that's an international group of physicians. That, I ask this question yeah. because I hear so often people are, oh, okay, I tried this doctor and that didn't work and then I went to Westchester and then I went to right. Philadelphia and now I'm in Hamburg but, and you're bingo. But what good is it if, uh, listen, 
doctors are are very wonderful people. They go into the profession to help people. If they went to be rich, they'd be stockbrokers. But they are they put their heart down the line. But they're only as good as what they're taught or program like a computer if they don't have the information to look and seek out then they can't react it's not how fair. about a responsible patient well i'm going to assume i right. have what are the what are the questions or what are the comments i should present to the doctor well, and insist on what i'm going to hopefully do is when i'm doing the um uh, writing the educational portion of the Act 83, we're going to use a symptom list to help okay. guide the physicians and the patients to ask one about these general questions that could affect people. So something like fatigue and depression. Absolutely, fatigue, depression, ADHD. Um, uh, ADHD. Sometimes schizophrenic-like behavior. My undergraduate degree is in psychology, so half of my time that I spend with people, I spend with them on a psychological basis. And the fact that, that they're calm down that they're it's not all in their head um in the terms of in their head it does get in your cells your body so it does go through your whole body can i insist as a patient in, in the interest right. of time so i i'm i've done some Sorry. research i'm seeing these symptoms i go to the doctor i found a doctor what do i ask for is there a test do i insist on something well what when you have do to I do is you, when you this is how you handle your doctor you you, you want to handle your doctor with with respect which they they give to you and just say doctor you, you know i do respect you could you please help me sort this out they automatically would say well i'll just order the line test but that is not true because in a majority of the time the line tests don't show anything that's why when we start this conversation you said that one physician said why well, i can order it but what good is it yeah because you have to be clinically trained in order to see how this disease lays out there really needs to be a good textbook written on the subject i'm in the i trust you will do that i, Dr. <laughs> I have the basics <laughs> written already but what i'm trying to do is i'm going to our residency would be nice well we're going to build yeah. we're we're trying to i have 120 acres in hamburg my goal through some of the patents that I hold, is to build a hospital there. And what I want to do is I want to educate 50 residents, physicians, and I want to take each resident physician and transplant them to each of the, one of the 50 states. Mm -hmm. And then I want to create a, a, a hospital center there where they can then be in charge of, of educating the number of physicians of that state. So how do we find you? Well, I'm at... Um, uh, um, Hamburg, Pennsylvania, 670 Mill Road, Hamburg. I have a farm there. Uh, we have a website. Um, um, Dr. Gregory Bach, Bach will find you. Yes. Yeah, yes. Do, yes. dot com slash line. Yes. Like the musician. And um, I'm here to try to help anybody. I want to help educate the physicians. I take care of a lot of doctors, lawmakers. Tell your lawmakers. Get them involved. Yeah. I, there's a lot of people. The former president of the United States, I gave a I second opinion. I saw a picture of you with... President, President Bush. Bush. President yes. Bush, who was a, a, a very wonderful man. Um, we were meeting at one time, and he said, I was out in the backwoods on my uh, Texas ranch, and I got this bite on my leg, and he showed me his bite, and he had a perfect EM rush. <laughs> and uh, he has my card. He keeps it in his wallet. Secret Service and, wasn't happy that day. <laughs> and, uh, I said, please, Mr. President, get to your doctor. Mr. President raised get, his pants. Get, he said, we well, take a look at this. It, get, it, get, get it treated. And uh, so, you know. He's just one Pope John Paul II, who's now Saint uh, Saint Pope yes. John. Uh, I had communicate with him six months before he had passed. He had Parkinson-like syndrome and had yes, track, contracted uh, Lyme disease in 1990 in Colorado. And that's mm -hmm. time for another story. But I had uh, I we wanted have to have you <laughs> back on what's the story. I certainly will have to do that. Well, um, and that and it, finally, can you tell us at what point do we part ways with our doctor because we're not getting satisfaction and, and seek out somebody else with listen again, everything should be done with respect. If you have a nice physician and the majority of them are that aren't either stressed because of whatever is occurring in the management of care. Um, you just say, please help me, work through this with me. If they're too busy and they don't want to hear what you have to say, it's just like a plumber. The plumber doesn't fix the leak, you get one that fixes the leak. It's very as good. simple as that. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome, and thank you very much for having us. It is my pleasure, Dr. Bach and Deborah Bach. I appreciate your candor, and I really appreciate the work you're doing. Keep it up, and hopefully we can put an end to Lyme disease. Thank you. Thank you.